What's up, bros? The Shred Nation. How's everybody doing today? Hey, happy Sunday. Happy Sabbath. We got a lot to take in here because the markets have been getting nasty and there's a lot to kind of just ponder over as we think about this. So when we're looking at markets, you know, we have a handful of things that we do, right? We have short-term trends, long-term trends, and intermediate-term trends. And on the short-term basis, you know, we are in a, a pretty steep little downtrend and we're kind of in between a lot of stuff. And so this is a very dangerous zone. I know a lot of people are looking for a, a big market bounce. And you know what? That may come, right? Because the long-term trend is still higher. But there are some things that we have to be aware of. Number one, you know, at least in our group, we had been preparing for a, a, a sell the news event when the... Federal Reserve cuts interest rates for the first time. I thought that would probably be what would trigger the sell-off. And, you know, they front-ran that a little bit. What I mean by front-ran that is that when Powell spoke, he basically said in September he's going to do it, right? And so we had a, you know, momentarily pop, right, in the QQQs. And then it was just, a, 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 then it was just donezo. So we had a momentarily pop. And then the next day, it just rolled over. And you can kind of, you know, the IWM telegraphed it even that day where you had this huge run. I was knee-deep on some calls on this thing. And then it rolled over even by the end of the day. And then the next day, it was just shredded. And then the day after, it was shredded. And it's like literally just back to that dreaded range that it's been on, been in for the last few years. So we have some cross currents happening. Why, why that's even a matter is essentially... Right, if the Federal Reserve is saying they're cutting interest rates, they're signifying that the economy is slowing down in a, a, a you know a significant manner, right? And so that they have to do it. And so even though people have been looking forward to it, the market front ran the whole cutting of the rates thing, right, for the last couple of years, anyways, right? When we started getting to the end of the cycle, right, the market started to already start to make its run. Markets tend to move 12, 18 months in advance of whatever news comes. And so just something to be uh, mindful of. Now, look, game plan for tomorrow, I think, okay, we are getting into some stretch territory for uh, a momentarily bounce. How long that lasts, I don't know. The key is going to be the open tomorrow. If we get the gap down tomorrow, then I think we've got a, a, a potential flush out and then a flip long uh, for a handful of days. If we have a flat open or even a gap up, okay, I think that maybe we even sell off. Look, the market's just been down two days here, right? So, you know, we had a few days of a bounce and the market's only down two days here. Usually you need three or more kind of big stretch days, I think, to get that kind of easy bounce. We're not even really oversold, you know, <clears throat> We're not that oversold either, right? We're at 42 stochastics. We haven't even triggered, right, an extreme oversold reading. And so we are getting there, but we're not really there. So we need the gap down. Without the gap down, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that we will, you know, get the easy bounce that everybody's looking for. So just something to just kind of keep into the back of your head. Now, look, on the other side of things, right, we can see the VIX was really popping you know, we were, VIX was really popping off on uh, this on Friday too, and so that was, you know, that's starting to get into some territory here. And so when you want to see the market kind of bottom out, right? You, I want to see this stretch, like I want to see the VIX coming to 35, 40, something along that end. I think that would be really amazing. You know, we'll keep an eye on this. You know, I'm not a big VIX trader guy, but. You know, seeing this starting to get elevated, uh, it, it's a good thing, right? We want to see this thing blow out a little bit. I think that's going to also lead to some good things. Guys, this is not the time to be a hero. This is a strictly day trading environment, I believe. A strictly a scalping day trading environment. When I, and guys, when I say scalping, yeah, there's, your hold times are short, but you still can rip 4 5 6% trades just scalping, right? And so you don't even need to hold overnight. I would not. My personal belief is that when the QQQs is under the 50-day moving average, that you do not want to be holding stocks overnight. It could be very enticing, especially if you missed a lot of this rally, to sit there and think, man, it'd be nice to probably get some calls going in NVIDIA or something like that, right? <clears throat> then all that happens is they start to bleed out a little bit. 
and you panic and you dump into the you know the bottom anyways and so there are times to swing trade i believe when you're in the goldilocks zone when the emas are pointing up and you see this kind of green shadows also pointing up that's the time you want to be holding overnight taking like really aggressive type of posturing multiple positions overnight different strategies will work you know all of this kind of stuff when we're in the reverse you know you want to stay away from trying to bounce these things and hold overnight if the bounce comes Guys, on an intraday basis, you will get swing trading gains, and we're setting up for it. But I do think we need the gap down. If we get the gap down, then, you know, we'll have some fun tomorrow, and we'll see what's going on. Some different things to just keep mind of as we're going through. You know, the QQQs is still not at the 200-day moving average, but the equal weight is there. So just something to kind of be mindful of as we're coming through the 200-day uh, is there in the equal weight, but not in the weighted. And so we do need that big stretch down. I want to get the candle completely outside the lower Bollinger Band. I think that's usually what kind of leads to a handful of days of bounce. And I, I don't know if we start to bounce, if that's just the bottom and we go back up to highs. I would be surprised if that happens. I think that we're in for probably a little bit more of a period of a volatile range uh, or something along that end, uh, mainly because of just the the length of stuff that we've you know come in through i know a lot of people are looking into the politics of this a hey, trump this uh kamala this you know biden this but uh israel this and i i i don't think that's what's really into play right now sure it leads, leads to some levels of uncertainty but you know i think right now the rates the u.s economy and these type of things and then just the the late cycle that we're in guys we have been in a bull market for two damn years right or one a year and uh, eight months and and a big one right we're up literally 100 percent from here to here off the bottom that's an incredible move beyond that a majority of stocks are up in the hundreds of percent that's something and you know not a majority of stocks but a lot of stocks right are up in the hundreds of percent and so that's something to keep mind of now some things that we need to just do right i think smh if this gap's down tomorrow, 208, I'm coming in hot on Soxel. That's my game plan for tomorrow. We get the game, we get the gap down. I'm coming in hot on Soxel. It said 201 million shares in volume. It's starting to feel like a blowout, a cat, you know, like that kind of climactic capitulation starting. You know, if we get the nasty gap down tomorrow, man, imagine if this thing, you know, rips down five points tomorrow. Dude, we've got it, right? We've got the setup. So watch this SMH. You know, I want to see this thing hit the 200-day moving average. That's my play for tomorrow. If we gap up, then I'm probably leaving a lot of things alone, all right? So just something to uh, kind of be mindful. I'm not going to sit there and watch the futures market and all this stuff. You know, I'm, I'm guessing we're already gapping down. But I won't sit there and, you know, stare at it all night because that's not my thing, right? You know, I know there's 24-hour trainings at IB and stuff, but... I think that's just a, probably a little bit of a sucker's game. So, Soxel is the main the main watch if we test into the 200-day moving average on the SMH. All right? Beyond that, if I need some plays, I think this MU was nasty. It felt a little capitulation-y on Friday, too. It was just grinding down the whole day. But if we get a big gap down on this, right, now it's starting to get a little bit vertical. I think, you know, coming down into some of this zones of love um, should help. Now, look, it's broken a lot of supports, and it's a broken chart. Don't You don't play it to get it back up to highs. It ain't going back there, guys. Not for a long time, maybe a year. You don't know. Qualcomm sitting right here on the 200-day moving average. A little bit slower, a little bit less ATR, probably a little bit easier to trade for some people. I think that's going to be in play. And then, you know, we've got um, the Arm Nation. You know, the Arm Nation... You know, this could open up right at the 200-day moving average. You know, better would be if it got down here. Now, ARM is a little bit harder to trade. It's got a spread. It can grind you out a little bit, uh, but it's getting straight vertical. Now, it did have its earnings out, and it was probably a dog, so something to be mindful of. But I think that's going to be, you know, definitely in play also. I'm keeping this list just very short very sweet you know you could do a little bit of um taiwan semiconductor too if we got a nice spot down over here but it's got a little bit more room to go i think 
you know, before you go. And of course, you know, you can always try, um, you know, you can always, oh, you can always roll in, right, with uh, good old NVIDIA too, uh, off the 100, something along that end. Uh, but I think we want to go even more stretched than NVIDIA, right? So like what I mean by that is like, you know, we want, this is down about 35 points and we've got the support here at 97. I'd like a, something even a little bit more stretched than that. That's why I want to try to roll with this. Roll with this Soxel Nation uh, if we can get it, right? Now, uh, beyond that, you know, if we just going to be fading stocks, like, you know, if we got to take shorts and stuff like that, then, you know, I probably would look at something like, like a Meta, uh, which is, you know, still near its highs, or, you know, an Apple, right? So it's just something, you know, um, you, if you break this range right here, you're probably going to flush out anyway. So super sweet. Super simple. Don't get too caught up in the weeds of uh, the economy and the politics. Just let the price action tell you when it's time. The rule of rubber band longs, right? Comfort trend rubber band long is you want the candle completely outside the lower Bollinger band. And you want the stochastics to get, uh, you know, under 20, but under 10 is ideal. So that's why I like this kind of arm. You know, the candle's already uh, outside the lower Bollinger band. Uh, that's why I like this MU, and I like this sock. So I want the stretchiest of stretch, right? You know, so like, see, this needs to gap down before you can do it. Um, keep it simple. I want you to focus on liquidity. I want you to focus in on ATR. And do not get big city dreams thinking that, you know, you want to start adding a bunch of overnighters and all of this. There are things going on in this market that we do not understand. We are just regular people. We're just day traders, right? You know, there are things that are going on that we don't understand. And so, you know, trying to put too much into it uh, is uh, above our pay grade. So, guys, trade fun, trade fast, trade safe. I love you guys. Peace.